Yo, what is good, Dev guys? Welcome back. In this video, I, I want to start with the compilation and see what kind of mess we run into. But we're about to get into setting up the asset manager, setting up some data assets inside the editor, and then we're going to set up the preliminary classes for our UI. So I'm going to hit this uh, good old debug here. And like I told you guys earlier in the first video, usually you need to run in debug game editor so that when your editor has a problem, you can actually put a breakpoint and it will actually hit the breakpoint. If you're not running a debug game editor, it won't hit the breakpoint. So you won't be able to debug your code and actually see what's happening. I run into a lot of people who actually don't know about debugging. I'm, I learned about it last year or the year before last from a colleague of mine uh, who's a nice plugin developer. Uh, and it really helped, like it, it turned me up. I also have a video on my channel that kind of, you know, I'm saying like introduces people to debugging, but it's one of those things that's not taught. And it's like one of the most, if not the most important skill about programming, because anybody can type code because you see, we got GitHub Copilot, things like chat GPT, anybody can like kind of write the code, but it's all about being able to step through the code and say, oh, right here is where I missed something or I added something wrong. We got a perfect build, baby. You know how you know how it look. I'm popping my collar right now. Squirrel, what's up, boy? Squirrel, I, squirrel, if you watching this, I want you to, I want you to, can you hear me pop my collar? Can you hear that? That's me popping my mother collar, baby. Um, hold on. Yeah, we're going to allow access. I'm, I'm, I don't know if I've used this engine before. I don't know if I've used this before. I'm not going to lie to you. I haven't opened this project, so it's going to compile shaders and I will see you guys after that. All right. So my shaders are done, you know, doing their thing. Hopefully the first thing I want to do is come on over, come on over baby to this project settings, go to the asset manager and let's go ahead and create a new array element in this primary asset types to scan. If I hit this plus sign here and I say that this is going to be a Carrick character part here and I want to give it the base class of our character part item uh, now we have this in our asset manager remember after you edit the asset manager you need to always restart the project it makes this weird bug happen uh, another thing I like to do is create a dev folder now you could put this in shooter core you could right you could but that means you have to do everything in shooter core so for things that I want to be accessible and all throughout the project, I make my own folder for it. Uh, it's cool to have that, you know what I'm saying? To make it feel like you're making a plugin with the game feature and you're being cool. But, you know, putting it in the content folder is just as cool. So I'm gonna make a new folder and we're going to basically put this into a folder called parts. Let's go ahead and make a folder for male. We won't do a female, but I'm just organizing them because that's how my brain works. And then I'm going to create a miscellaneous here. Let's go miscellaneous data asset and pass it by character item or character part item here. And we're going to name this part underscore head underscore male. This doesn't actually matter. This name doesn't matter. It's just an organization thing for us. Uh, I'm going to control D instead of uh, and, and let me let me uh, put this on list because Jesus Christ, I, I really sometimes it's hard to see what you're typing is out of there. So list just makes it a little bit easier and you can still see the icon. So we'll do head arms control D. We want to say torso and control D. And finally, we want to say lakes. Another thing I like to always do is turn this folder blue catches my eye a little bit and we have our parts we have our mail folder we save that we go back to the project settings and inside the asset manager when we look at this directories here <clears throat> excuse me uh, we want to pass it our parts mail folder to look inside of there for all of the data assets and then in this rules here we want to set this to always cook whether it's a development build, whether it's a shipping build, we want to set it to always cook. And then let's look and take a look at the rules here. You can see that the the priority is negative one, meaning that it's like the it'll be the first priority, I believe, or that there is no priority levels to it. So we'll keep that the same. And for that, that's pretty much how we want that to rock character part, character part item. And now we can come to this data asset. And I think we'll be able to say that this item type, which is very important, uh, because you will get an error 
if you do not set this item type to character part, right? You can also, now don't get me wrong, you can also hard set this inside of the actual data asset. Like when, whenever you say here, this uh, item type, you can actually just type in an F name of character part, but you know, that gets kind of clunky uh, when you want to do inheritance and things like that. Cause in my project, this uh, character part item inherits from a customizable item base class, which has like a F text for the name of the item, an icon, all these different things that just make it a little bit uh, easier to access that data without having to load all of this data. But you know, that's to each his own. All right. So you see here, we have this part name tag. We will give it a, a new tag. And there's this cool thing that you can do inside of a uh, the U property, but we're not going to do that here. So we're going to say part type dot head and no, we're on arms part type dot arms. And we're going to say male. So that is separated by gender or sex or whatever you want to call it. Uh, you know, but I don't know what you identify as don't cancel me. So we're going to call this part type dot arms dot male. And, um, one thing that I don't like with open up the editor, I'm gonna open up this editor preferences and I'm going to tell this asset editor open location to open in the main window so that it opens in a tab here instead of, you know, doing whatever it's doing. So it's like that. All right, moving on, let's do part type. And we want to say head dot mail. And we're just creating a new tag. Uh, if you didn't see what I did there, I typed in part type. And then this button lets you add a sub tag to that parent. So do that. And then remember to set this to character part. We're just setting up the, 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 the simple data first. So again, look for part type, hit this little add sub tag thing. We want to call this legs that mail, uh, turn it to character part and then handle this final puppy here. Uh Oh, look for part tag. Whoops. I said part tag. You will be part tag part tag part type i'm sorry i'm just saying part tag this whole time part type torso dot mail right set this to character part save that now i don't have any icons for this so i'm gonna just use some unreal icons let's see what, let's see what unreal has in here well, we're just gonna use some some basic shit up in here um for the torso let's use this it looks like a torso for the legs Let's use, I don't know <laughs> what looks like legs in here. Let's see what we got. Let's see if we got any legs in here. Does it really matter? I'll use this. Screw it. We'll use that for legs for head. I'm going to use this and for arms. I'll use this screw it. Use whatever icons you have accessible to you. Do what thou wilt, my brother. Okay, so with this parts mesh, this is where it gets sexy. We hit a plus sign here, we get this T map. Now, I wanna show you guys a trick, and this is gonna take a little bit of more compilation, but it will allow me to, to show you guys something cool. Uh, so in here, if we add a new gameplay tag, we actually wanna give this to parent of the part, and then we want to call, uh, we want to get the type that it is. So we will say arms and then let's call this default because imagine we have all these different arms. Like imagine you have an army character that has three different camos. You want a default camo. You want the, the winter camo. You want the summer camo. All right. So you would do part arms, summer part arms, winter part arms, default and then we'll, we're using that to to filter what actual data we want to use but what i want to show you is that inside of this data asset there is actually a meta specifier that we can give this for the f gameplay tags we can say meta equals categories and we can say this equals part type and copy this meta specifier here copy this and take it down to this t map here and it even works for T maps, but we want to say that this 
is part and put a comma here. So what this is going to do is it is only going to allow us to use categories with this parent tag right here. And that just it just helps out with the filler because if you look here and you, you see all these damn tags we get, we don't want to see all those tags. We just want to see, you know, what I'm saying maybe just this tag for there, just this tag for there. It allows you to have a little bit more of a, a organization. So I am going to just hit this uh, little button here to restart the debug. And before I do that, let me go into the editor and just uh, control shift S here. Oh, there's that error. You see that error? Uh, this is the error you would get if you don't change the part type to character part. It says that the primary asset ID character part part torso male for asset, whatever this asset is, does not match the object's real ID of character part part type dot torso dot male. It doesn't match that. And this will not load properly at one t at runtime. And that's because at one point, we probably saved this but didn't save this but it's all it's all good now that that was that was far and long ago you can see we saved since then and we don't get that error all right so i saved i am going to restart the editor and i'll see you guys in a second okay with that compiled i'm gonna pop back into my parts folder and uh where were we at i don't know what part we were on we're on the arms here so now uh, if we we want to change this slot to arms first off and the part mesh you can use whichever one you want to use I am going to use and remember in this specific case the arms are equal to the hands because the torso has the arms in it okay so uh, let's open up that folder I'm and I usually have two content browsers open so I can do you know I'm not gonna have two of these puppies open at one time uh, but let's go to this casual uh, kit here and let's look at the models and you can see here we got him with a shirt off looking swell we got him with a shirt on we got him with a jacket but we're just gonna use these hands I guess because they're the only hands he has so we'll put that in arms and then this does not have an anim bp remember only the head needs an anim bp so we'll uh save that all right moving on let's go to the head which i think has more than one and you'll see that that categories thing allows us to do this you see what's on this filter nothing but part now it's just so much easier to not have to search through you can just hit part and say head default and uh, let's do the head slot and I'm actually going to open up this this thing here and enter this so I can have it accessible a little bit easier. So what are we thinking for head? He only has one head. OK, I guess the rest of them are like beards and stuff like that. What is this pre-made stuff? OK, that's a full character. OK, that's cool. We'll just use this one head. We'll pass that puppy in. Uh, currently, as it stands, we don't have the anim BP. That's something that we will have to get into a little bit later. But let's set these uh, let's set these jokers up. All right, moving on to the legs. Um, let's go ahead, drop down, and give this a, an element, and let's make part legs dot default. And remember what I was saying about these tags, man. For uh, you, this means you can have, man. You're literally given an unlimited amount of tags that you can use because as long as you can come up with a tag name, you can come up with a new slot, right? So this allows you, like I said here, I think here we got what two legs, one, two legs, we got three uh, torsos. So this allows you to have here and here. And just imagine, bro, if you got like an, an artist that's just cranking these things out, you don't want to use an enum that you got to update every time you go past the amount of enum. Yeah, like enum slots you have so you use the tag so that you can just say okay this is the default this is the the pants um uh, this is the jacket this is the shirt you know what i'm saying you can give it like little names like that and then you move on about your day but this is a leg joint here and let's give it the default legs which is the naked ones we'll pass that in there and then we can add another element this is our first one that has more than one so that we can see how this works so we can do part legs and make a sub tag of legs and call this pants right 
And then we can give it the one with the pants inside of this uh, puppy here. Pass that in, change this to legs and um, leave this empty because remember only the head needs the uh, actual anim BP. So that's it for the legs coming into this torso and make sure you hit save. You never know when Unreal is going to crash. Uh, add an element here for the, the torso. Uh, let's give it the name of part torso dot default, right? And in here, we want to give it the, the naked guy and change this to torso. Let's add another element. Let's give it the key of torso dot shirt. Let's grab this shirt, pass that in, change this to torso. And one more element. Uh, we're adding this just so we can see how the UI is going to function with all of these different things, depending on the category and things like that. You know how it goes, baby. You know how it goes. All right, for this last one, I want that jacket. Let's give it the name of part torso dot jacket. And you can also do a sub tag of this. So if you had a jacket that was green, you can go jacket dot green, jacket dot red. You go, you get what I'm saying? You can go crazy with the tags, bro. F gameplay tags are one of my favorite types as well. Uh, it's up there. It's up there. Uh, it's like right there with T maps because usually if I'm using a T map, I'm using gameplay tags with it. So that, those are like brother and sister. Damn near. Change this to torso. Control Shift S to save all. And this is all the things we need for our data here. Uh, we could check to see if these guys will load properly. But the good way to see is that we don't get any of those errors that basically tell us that it won't load properly. You know what I'm talking about? So, and, and I hope you guys can see that this, this system can be extended. If you wanted to do something like glasses that go attached to the head, all you would do is in the code, add a slot to the head that's attached to the head and then you would then increase the amount of slots in your enum and then you would add a a, a, a part for or like another data class for all of the head attachments you get what i'm saying uh, i might do that in a bonus video just to show you guys how that is possible some people need to see it to believe it and yeah that is setting up the data asset. In the next video, I want to set up the actual UI. That's going to be, whew, okay, I hope you guys are ready because UI is one of those things, brother. UI is one of those things. So uh, join me in the next video and I'll see you guys in there. Peace.